suppose you're looking to get a power amplifier that will be most suitable for your passive loudspeakers or loudspeakers that will match your amplifier in that case you need to stick around because in this video i'll be showing how to match power amplifiers to passive loudspeakers correctly there are two factors to consider when matching power amplifiers to loudspeakers they are impedance and power there's actually a third factor that i'll talk about as a bonus point so you have to watch this video till the end to find out impedance is your position of a circuit to alternating current and it is measured in ohms now assuming you already have the loudspeaker and you need to select a matching power amplifier which is most often the case the first step is to determine the impedance of the loudspeaker and you generally find the impedance written on the loudspeaker specification sheet or the amplifier's website i'll be using the wafido pros delta x12 loudspeaker for illustration and from the spec sheet here we can see that the system rated impedance for this speaker is 8 ohms. Most single woofer loudspeakers and subwoofers are rated 8 ohms, while the double woofer equivalents are rated 4 ohms. Now, that might not always be the case, so you should always consult your speaker's specification sheet. If you plan to connect multiple loudspeakers to a single amplifier channel, then you have to determine the combined impedance for those speakers. Well, stay with me on this video because I'll get to all of that in a bit. The second step is to determine the power rating of your loudspeaker. You also find that within the technical specifications of the speaker. As you can see here, there are three different power ratings given. But we're only interested in the continuous power rating as that determines how much power the speaker can handle over an extended period of time. The continuous power rating is also referred to as the RMS power rating and for our last speakers here it is 400 watts. Having obtained this information, we will need an amplifier that can deliver at least the equivalent of the continuous power rating of the loudspeaker per channel into its impedance value. In our particular case, it will be an amplifier that can output at least 400 watts per channel into 8 ohms. As a general rule, any power amplifier that can supply between the continuous power rating of our loudspeaker, which is 400 watts in our case, and double that value, which will be 800 watts, is suitable. Wafidel Pro has actually recommended some amplifiers for this speaker on their website. Let's check out the XR2500. As you can see, we have five um, models of power amp in this XR series. Wafidel Pro has recommended the 2500 for us. Now, what we're interested in is power delivery per channel into 8 ohms. And so, we're not interested in 4 ohm stereo in this case, and we're not interested in the 8 ohm bridge mono. We're interested in 8 ohm stereo or per channel. And for the XR2500, we can see that it delivers 530 watts uh, per channel into 8 ohms, which is very suitable for our loudspeaker needs because we need a power amplifier that can deliver between 400 watts and 800 watts into 8 ohms. And this power amplifier, the XR2500, delivers 530 watts. So it meets our minimum requirement with some headroom available. Now the XR1500 that delivers 400 watts per channel into 8 ohms will still work because it delivers just 400 watts and is the minimum but given the choice between the 1500 and the 2500 I would definitely go for the 2500 because it's okay to have more headroom but if that's just what you have the 1500 then it's still okay because it meets the minimum requirement as it delivers 400 watts. Now the XR3000 delivers 700 watts per channel into 8 ohms and it's still well within our range of 400 to 800 watts. Now given the choice between 1500, 2500 and 3000, I think the 2500 is okay. I will only go for the 3000 if I plan on connecting maybe multiple speakers to the uh, power amplifiers, to one channel with power amplifier, but we'll go into that in a bit. The XR 3500 delivers over a thousand watts per channel into 8 ohm and I think it's overkill that's too much power for the loudspeaker and the XRO 800 delivers 230 watts per channel into 8 ohms and this is way less power for the speaker now it might interest you to know that the XRO 800 is more likely to cause damage to your loudspeaker than the XRO 3500 because with the XRO 800 there is a limit to how loud your speaker will be when you connect a power amplifier that um, delivers less power than the speaker requires and so you might then be tempted to crank up the level amplifier level control knob to increase the speaker level the speaker volume will not increase but you will end up clipping your input and a clipped signal actually causes your speaker drivers to overheat so it damages your speaker way faster than even a larger capacity power amplifier would. In case you're wondering if you can use the XR800 connected in bridge mono mode to power the Delta X12 loudspeaker because this amplifier 
outputs 690 watts when connected in bridge mono mode? The answer is yes, you absolutely can. But this method is not very efficient because you end up using one power amplifier for one loudspeaker. It's better to use a larger capacity power amplifier and then connect multiple speakers to it than to get a lesser capacity power amp and then having to buy one power amp for one loudspeaker, which means you have to buy more power amplifiers. For the purpose of making this video very general, let's check out another type of loudspeaker. I'll be looking at the JBL SRX 700 series. These loudspeakers are very popular in my city. Now let's check out the 712M. The nominal impedance for this loudspeaker it says here passive 8 ohms, while the continuous power rating for the loudspeaker here is 800 watts. Now 800 watts looks much for a loudspeaker with a 12 inch woofer, but this is one of the reasons why you don't have to assume because of the size of the loudspeaker, you have to actually check the specification sheets to be sure what the impedance rating and the power rating for your loudspeaker is. As we've established from our general rule of matching amplifiers to loudspeakers, we'll need an amplifier that can deliver between 800 watts to 1600 watts per channel into 8 ohms. Also, if you do a little bit of digging into the user manual for the SRX 700 series, you find a session in page 7 titled Recommended Power Amplifier. And for the model we are looking at, the SRX 712M, the recommended amplifier is an amplifier that can deliver between 800 to 1600 watts into 8 ohms. So it actually confirms the general rule that I just talked about. Now let's go back to the power amplifier we just checked, the Wafide Pro's XR series. Uh, mind you, you can use any power amplifier to match any loudspeaker, irrespective of the manufacturers. Uh, the XRO series, we only have the XRO 3500 power amplifier that would be suitable for this loudspeaker we just checked because we need a, a, an amplifier that delivers between 800 watts and 1600 watts per channel into 8 ohms. And the XRO 3500 or 3500 delivers 1020 watts per channel into 8 ohms, which is suitable for this application. Now, I have the spec sheet for another amplifier, the PV CS6000 and CS4000. And from here, we can see that rated power 8 ohms, that's both channel driven, that's the same thing as 8 ohms stereo or 8 ohms per channel. So we have for the CS6000, we have 1307 watts per channel into 8 ohms. And for the CS4000, we have 920 watts per channel into 8 ohms. So both the CS6000 and the CS4000 would work for this loudspeaker. Suppose you want to connect multiple loudspeakers to a single channel of your power amplifier. Like I said before, the first thing you need to do is to determine the combined impedance of those loudspeakers. And the formula for doing that is this. Impedance of loudspeaker divided by the number of loudspeakers, assuming they all have the same impedance. Now, I strongly, strongly recommend that if you want to combine loudspeakers like this, you have to combine loudspeakers with the same impedance value. And so from this formula, if you're combining two 8 ohms loudspeaker, that will give you a combined impedance of 4 ohms. If you're combining three 8 ohms speakers, it will give you a combined impedance of 2 and 2 third ohms. And if you're combining four 8 ohms loudspeaker, that will give you a combined impedance of 2 ohms. Now you should note that there is a minimum load impedance beyond which your power amplifier would generally risk shutting down. So you have to check your amplifier specification sheet to actually check that out. Now for some amplifiers it will be directly stated in the specification sheet as minimum load impedance. But if it's not written like that then you have to check the minimum impedance value that has been stated in the spec sheet. Now having determined the combined load impedance for your loudspeakers, you have to get a power amplifier that can deliver into that impedance value enough power that will be sufficient for your combined loudspeakers. Let's, let me use the Delta, 12, Delta X12 loudspeaker that we just checked as an example. If you're connecting two Delta X12 loudspeakers, each of the speakers have an impedance value of 8 ohms. So if you combine in two, that will give you a combined impedance of 4 ohms. And then the continuous power rating for each of the loudspeaker is 400 watts. So if you're combining two, you need a loudspeaker that can give you at least 800 watts of power into 4 ohms because the 800 watts of power will be shared 400 watts each for both of the loudspeakers. And like we said from the general rule of connecting amplifiers to loudspeaker, you need an amplifier that can give you between the minimum 
power and double that value so if we need an amplifier that can give us minimum of 800 watts so amplifier that can give us between 800 watts and 1600 watts of power into four ohms know that the combined load impedance is now four ohms that kind of amplifier would be suitable so let's check out the amplifiers we've been using so far for the wafida pro xr amplifier series we are looking for an amplifier that can give us up to 800 watts of power into 4 ohms now we're no longer looking at 8 ohms stereo or 8 ohm per channel we're now looking at 4 ohms stereo or 4 ohms per channel and you can see that the xr3000 give us gives us 1050 watts per channel into 4 ohms and the xr3500 gives us 1460 watts per channel into 4 ohms so both of these power amplifiers would be, would be suitable for combining two Delta X12 um, loudspeakers into one channel. Now let's see if we can connect four Delta X12 loudspeakers into a single amplifier channel. Now we already know that will give us a combined impedance of two ohms. That's eight ohms divided by four loudspeakers, which is two ohms. And so we also need an amplifier that can give us power delivery into two ohms that would be up to about 1600 watts. So it can be shared um, 400 watts, at least 400 watts each by the loudspeakers. Now, if you check out the XR series of amplifier that we just use now, you can see that we only have four ohm stereo as our least um, impedance value here. So it simply means that this power amplifier cannot deliver um, to a load that is below 4 ohms. If not, you risk overheating the amplifier and risk damaging the amplifier. So let's switch to our PV amplifiers, the CS6000 and the CS4000 uh, amplifiers. Now, if you check out the CS4000 first, reset power 2 ohms gives us 1850 watts, which is above the 1600 watts minimum value that we need. So it works for are used and then rated power into two ohms for the cs6000 is 2900 watts that's well within our, our range of 1600 to 3200 watts so this actually works well for this use you can apply everything we've talked about so far in this video when matching a power amplifier to a passive loudspeaker and you're good to go but for my bonus point i want to talk about a third factor i usually consider under special circumstances and that third factor is loudspeaker sensitivity which you can also find on the loudspeaker specification sheet loudspeaker sensitivity is determined by sending one watt of power to a loudspeaker and then measuring the loudness of that loudspeaker from a distance of one meter the value is given in decibels or db and a value higher than 92 db is usually referred to as high sensitivity a speaker with a high sensitivity will achieve loudness with less power when compared to a speaker with a low sensitivity now why is this important if you're unable to get a power amplifier that supplies the right amount of power let's say 400 watts to your loudspeaker and your loudspeaker has a high sensitivity like the Delta s12 that has a sensitivity of 97 db then you should be able to use a loudspeaker that supplies lesser power say 350 watts to the loudspeaker and you'll be able to achieve good loudness before you get to a point whereby you clip your input this is a small thing but i think it's important to consider when you are in this kind of situation well that's it for this video if you've been able to get any form of value from this video then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already thank you for seeing this video i'm kelvin i'll see you in the next one <music>